Reuters is reporting that Canada is expected to join the talks as soon as today, that the Foreign Minister of Canada, Chrystia Freeland, is on her way to Washington and could re-enter an accelerated uh, set of talks that is expected to wrap by the end of this week. We have reached out to the U.S. Trade Representative for confirmation of that, but Reuters is also reporting some specifics about what the content requirement for autos would be. Reuters reporting, according to a senior U.S. trade official, that the deal between U.S in Mexico would increase U.S. and regional content in cars to 75 percent. That's up from the current requirement of 62 and a half percent. And as to that wage component, this deal, according to Reuters, would see 40 to 45 percent of auto content made by workers earning an average base wage of $16 an hour. So the the idea behind that provision is essentially if the president of the United States wants to keep production from moving out of the U.S. for the sake of cheap labor existing in Mexico alone, well, raising the wage on average for the workers that are producing those vehicles would take away that incentive from those companies. That is a provision that is going to get some pretty swift pushback from automakers who argue that they make cars in Mexico because they sell to a Mexican consumer or for other reasons other than cheap labor. Uh, I've heard automakers privately, when this provision was first aired a few months ago, describe it as Soviet in nature to be demanding a wage uh, be set for the type of production that we're talking about here. Uh, so I imagine that we will get some pushback from the auto industry when this is official. Kayla, it's not clear to me exactly what the president is proposing here. I mean, he, he's got authorization, as you mentioned, to uh, negotiate this on the fast track under NAFTA. Uh, is this name change uh, supposed to be, uh, I guess, just a pressuring tactic? To actually change the name, they'd have to go through the entire process with Congress if this were a bilateral deal. Isn't that what you were saying? Yes, um, it, precisely, John. I mean, to change the name, you would have to basically introduce a uh, new treaty, have it ratified by Congress, have it called something completely different. Um, and this is something that while the president is saying this from the um, perch of the Oval Office, Mexican officials have not uh, acknowledged whatsoever. When you ask them about the issues that they have been working out behind the scenes with the U.S., they have said, you know, we won't even disclose the elements of what agreements we've reached because they all require Canada to be on board. So they don't acknowledge this as just a U.S.-Mexico deal. They are very clear about this being uh, one with the end result of being a trilateral deal, though it is clear that the president wants to use the semantics here to pressure Canada. Kayla, any update on this so-called sunset clause? I know that was a huge sticking point in all these negotiations. Have they given any more details around that? Well, we have asked and asked and asked both the U.S. and the Mexican side about where things stand there. Um, I had heard that um, last week that there was an expectation that the U.S. would drop the demand uh, for this deal to be renewed every five years. That had been um, a huge point of contention, not only uh, on the Canadian and Mexican side, but also among the business community uh, who had argued that if we're going to make long-term investments, we need to know that this is going to be a deal that's around for longer than five years. That being said, the argument of the U.S. Trade Representative Robert Lighthizer was, well, who would enter into a lease that just goes on in perpetuity and you never get to renegotiate it? He wanted to essentially create some of these um, milestones or mile markers every few years so that all the parties had to get back, uh, back in the room and talk about whether it was still a good deal. Um, but the expectation is that the U.S., in order to get a deal done, would have to drop that provision because it is such a poison pill or it is viewed as such a poison pill by not only Canada and Mexico, but also the U.S. business community at large.